We're gonna build a cache dashboard, but it won't be just any cache dashboard. We wanna know the precise moment when we're gonna run out of cash and to see the trail of however many months prior to this date that we set here so we can prepare and make the appropriate decision. To start, I have this Excel file that showcases my cash balance every month based off of the inputs that I have over here. So if I change my revenue or expenses, my cash balance dynamically updates as such. According to this, I'm gonna be running out of cash in March, 2025. So this dashboard shows that date and also gives me a six month preview of what things will look like. So let's get started by creating a new tab, which I'll call cash dashboard and hiding my grid lines by hitting Alt W V G, or you could have came to view and then unchecked grid lines as such. Now, you'll notice that I have a custom theme imported with my brand's colors over here. This will save me time whenever I'm creating colors, fonts, and general styles. So I'm gonna start by outlining my dashboard with the edges that you see over here. So I'll select the full range in cells B4 to Q35. Then I'll create a light border by first hitting Alt H, B for border, and then I. Or you could have clicked this button over here and then gone to line style. Then I'll apply an outside border by clicking Alt H, B, S. Or I could have again come over here, selected border for outside borders as such. Great, now let's make both column A and column B a bit more narrow to create a nice padding for where my data is gonna go. Great, now let me add in my logo in the top left corner over here. Then I'll add in my title row in row seven by first selecting this entire range, then selecting my background color and choosing this light gray over here. Now I'll write the words cash dashboard in cell C7 and I'll hit enter. Now notice that my font already defaults to pop-ins, which is part of my theme. Let's make this size 22 and I'll bold it by pressing control B and then I'll make it just a bit taller and I'll align middle by hitting Alt H A M or clicking this button right over here. Okay, now let me add a nice 3D effect on the title by inserting a rectangle shape. So let me go ahead and select insert shapes. I'll choose this rounded corners as such. I'll then select Alt and I'll hold down the information so that it snaps to grid. Now you'll notice that my theme by default goes to a yellow background. So I'll just come in over here. I'll actually say that I want this instead to be white. Then I'll make the outline this white gray over here. Then I'll click on shape effects, shadow, and then I'll click on offset bottom as such. I'm gonna right click. Let's click on send to back. Great, now I'm almost done with my outline, but now I need a placeholder for where exactly my cash out data is going to go. And if you're new to this channel, welcome. I'm Josh, your CFO guy, and I help people like you grow in your career by sharing fun and engaging content around Excel, finance, and accounting. If you aren't already subscribed, go ahead and hit the button now. You won't wanna miss these videos I got coming up. So I'll go to cell P13 and type cash out date. Now I'll make it a font size of 26. I'll highlight the words cash out and press control B to bold just that section. Okay, now let's extend column P so that it all reads cleanly as such. Okay, lastly, I need to enter in this yellow box over here for where my cash out date is going to go. So I'll go to cell P14, I'll make it a yellow background. Now I'll type in manually 331 2025 and I'll make this a font size of 20. Then I'll hit Alt H A C to align center or by clicking this button over here. Okay, now let's bold this. Let's also align it for the middle. Now let's change this instead to read the month and the year like we have over here. For that, I'll use custom formatting by hitting Control one and going down to custom, then selecting M M M M for the month and then Y Y Y Y for the year. I'll click okay. Great, now let's create a named range out of this so I can easily refer to it later when someone reviews my file who wants to understand what's happening. To do that, I'll hit Alt M for the formula bar and then M again for define name. And again, you could have just clicked this button right here and I'll call this cash out date. Then when I click okay, you can see that when I click on this cell, cash out date reads over here. Perfect. Now, one small detail. I wanna make this over here, my cash out date, have rounded edges rather than the sharp edges that Excel shows me over here. So first, I'm gonna go ahead and take this. Let's just make it a little bit taller. And now let's go ahead and insert a new shape. And again, I'll hold down Alt as I come in over here on top of it. And now I'll select a yellow outline, no shape fill. And let's go ahead and make the border weight 
four and a half as such. All right, now this looks good, but I could still see these corners. So let me just make it a little bit rounder as such. Okay, looks great. This may seem like a small detail, but it's in these small details that you can really impress your audience. Okay, so now we need to prepare this chart. The key to this chart is the fact that we want it to be dynamic. Remember, anytime my cash goes below zero, I wanna grab that date over here and show the trend for a few months prior. So let me first go ahead and enter months to plot in cell C2 and write six in cell E2. Now let's make this a named range by again hitting Alt M M Enter, and I'll call this months to plot. And we're gonna make the scope just for this cash dashboard so that it won't be referenced on other tabs as well. Then I'll just highlight rows one and two. I'll then group it by hitting Alt A G or by coming to the data tab and hitting group and then this group button as such. Now, whenever I wanna present this dashboard, I could just hide that as I need. Okay, now let's populate my cash out date by replacing the fixed value that I have over here so that it'll dynamically update with whatever my cash out date is. To do that, I'm gonna use the index match function so that it dynamically looks up the date in which my cash goes down to zero for the first time. If you aren't familiar with how index match works, it's a great function that allows you to look up values based off of whatever criteria you wanna set. Some people use XLOOKUP, which is another good lookup function. So I'll come back to my dashboard, I'll click this cell and I'll write equals index. Now I want to index my dates over here. Then Excel is asking me for the row. I'm going to place zero because we already know the row that we're going to pull the values from. For the column, here's the key. I want to utilize the match function and it will split out the position of where this match takes place. So I'm going to write true for the lookup, enter a comma, then I'll select my ending cash range over here and I'll say less than zero. I'll hit comma again and enter in zero for an exact match, close the parentheses for my match, and again, close the parentheses for my index function. So this is saying, find me the exact position of where the first instance of my ending cash goes below zero, which is March 2025 over here. Now my balance updates dynamically. So if I just come to April 2024 and enter in minus 10,000, you'll see that my cash dashboard over here shows now April 2024 as the first date in which my cash goes below zero. So I'll go ahead and undo that. And now let's populate our chart. To start, I'm going to copy the dates over here and then reference my ending cash over here so that I could easily reference this in my chart. All right, let's go ahead and just change the format so that this shows as a date. So I'll hit Alt H N S for short date and hit enter. Okay, that's a little bit easier to read now. Okay, now let's populate the chart. But before we do, we need a dynamic range to populate the cash balance for the six months prior leading up to this date. For that, I'm gonna use the filter function wrapped inside the transpose function. The filter function is a spill function in Excel that is super powerful and allows you to return a number of cells as an output instead of just one cell like a traditional function. Now I want the filter function to return an array of both dates and values of the six months leading up to my cash out month over here. So I'll navigate to cell S14 and I'll type in date and then in T14, I'll enter cash balance. Okay, then in cell S15, I'll enter in equals filter now I'm being asked for my array. I'll point to the information in both my date and ending cash values over here and then hit comma. Now I'm being asked for what I want to include. I want to actually include two conditions. Condition number one is that my dates over here need to be less than or equal to my cash out date shown over here. Condition number two is that the dates need to be within the range of whatever month I have over here, in this case, six. I want to in essence, pull the values for all the dates in between. So first I'll enter in my condition as such. I'll select my dates and I'll say that they need to be less than or equal to my cash out date. And because I have a named reference, I can just go ahead and start typing in cash and then hit tab for the named range to populate. Let's go ahead and close the parentheses and hit enter to see what Excel does. As you can see, it now populates all of the dates and values that match to having the condition of being less than or equal to March, 2025. Let's go ahead and wrap this around a transpose function so we can see this a little bit more easily. And let's also come over here and just change the actual formatting for this to be a date. So I'll just select Alt H N S, or I can click over here and type in short date, I'll hit enter. And then for this, let's actually use values. I'll hit Alt H K or you could have clicked this button right over here and then I'll round down by hitting Alt H9 twice or by hitting this number over here. Okay, so it looks like this is working, but now I need my second condition for it to be within the range of only six months leading up to March, 2025. 
Well, I can add an additional condition inside my filter function by wrapping this around a parentheses and then multiplying it by a new parentheses. This time, I'm going to say that my dates need to be greater than or equal to the EO month of my cash out date minus months to plot. All right, now let's go ahead and close one more parentheses. And let's again read this just to make sure we understand. So we're pulling in the values from both of these rows only if the condition meets both of these requirements. The dates need to be less than or equal to the cash out date, and the dates need to be greater than or equal to the six months prior to the cash out date as such. We then filter those results and we transpose the results. Looks like it's working. So I can now come over here and I could change this to a seven or a 10 or a three and my values automatically update. So let's change this back to a six and then get started with creating our chart. To get started, I'll click anywhere in our spill array. I'll then go to insert and I'll click over here on cluster column. What's neat is this chart is now tied to the dynamic range. So as I change this value over here, my chart will automatically update the actual amount of series that show on it. Okay, let's now make this a lot prettier. First, let me just make this bigger by selecting the range and going over here. All right, now I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna click on format data series. I'm gonna go to the paid icon. I'll go to border and I'll click on rounded corners. Now my chart has rounded corners as such. Then I'll go to chart design. I'll click on add chart element, grid lines, format, minor, vertical. Now, as you can see, I also have these vertical dates as such. Now I'm gonna click on the dates. I'm gonna right click. I am then going to go to format axis. I'm gonna come down to number and I'm gonna change the format code to MMM-YY to get just the first three letters of each month and the two numbers in each year. I'm gonna go ahead and click add, perfect. Now let's go ahead and make this a size 12. Then I'll click on labels. I'll go to label position and I'll click on low. Now let's change the color of the bar chart. I'll just right click, I'll go to fill. And I'm gonna actually make it this gray over here. Now let's add data labels. So again, I'll right click the bar chart and then I'll click on add data labels. And I'll click the data labels. I'll make this a size 12. And then we'll make the background a dark blue background and the font color a yellow. Now let's delete the left axis because we don't need it anymore. And we're done. Let's again check, does this all work? If I type in four, if I type in 10, looks like all of my values dynamically update. Now to send it off, I'll go ahead and select this entire range. I'll press Control C, then I'll hit Alt H V, and then U to paste the picture right over here. Now to send an email to my investors to let them know about when we'll be running out of cash. Creating a cash dashboard is just one of the many dashboards you should have at your fingertips with your financial reporting. Here's another one involving a KPI dashboard where you can showcase the top metrics in your business and compare them to any other period. Go ahead and select that to learn more and I'll catch you in the next video.